This is the most important food to eat if you want to reverse kidney disease. Catherine here, I've been working with people with kidney disease for more than 10 years now. And I know that if you have kidney disease, the diet can seem like a hazard puzzle to solve, especially if diabetes is also present. But you can't afford to ignore it. Following the right diet is always the first and the most important step when it comes to repairing the kidneys. Yes, reversing kidney disease is always possible even in the advanced stages. And for many patients, the diet alone could be enough to reverse the decline of kidney function. But why has it to be so complicated? Well, part of the reason is misinformation. Internet shills are still telling kidney disease patients today to avoid, in particular, carbohydrates. You can either eat these with the cute little fork they give you, or you can eat them like a true carnivore. Meat, salt, pepper. That's it. But medical science proved them wrong, time and time again. In fact, if you would follow the recommendation of avoiding carbohydrates, your kidneys would probably be damaged by that. So question, what foods should you eat more of in order to improve your GFR numbers? Today we know that in order to improve with CKD, you must get most of your calories from low GI carbohydrates, even if you have diabetes. This food pyramid you see here is from a recent study on people reversing kidney disease. This is a randomized controlled trial published on the British Journal of Nutrition in 2022. A very significant study for us because all the patients in the intervention group were able to improve. On average, all of them lowered their GFR, lowered their uric acid, lowered their creatinine, lowered their bone, lowered their blood pressure, and enhanced their quality of life. All that just by eating better. Yes, they did this by following a diet with carbs as its main calorie source, as we can clearly see here. And by the way, while this study wasn't done on diabetes patients, there are other studies done on diabetes patients confirming that these macros work for them, as we can see here. Confirming that you should still get the biggest part of your calories from carbohydrates if you have kidney disease with or without diabetes while limiting protein intake. Okay guys, we're going to see what foods really help now and it will be great if you could take a moment to like this video and to share it with a friend if you want. Now let's imagine for a moment that you are really set to improve your kidney health. Let's imagine that you really want to start a diet that improves your GFR number. What high carb foods are best for kidney health? The short answer is focus on carb sources that are low in protein, low in phosphorus, and low on the GI scale. There are three main categories of high carb foods that must be present in your diet. Fruit, starchy vegetables, grains. And while those with CKD in the advanced stages will want to focus more on foods that are low in protein and phosphorus, and those with diabetes will want to focus more on foods that are low on the GI scale, the foods that we will see today are going to be great for everyone. Make these foods your primary staple if you want to stop or reverse the decline of your GFR. So let's start from the beginning and let's take a look at some of the healthiest fruits for diabetes and kidney disease. Starting with berries. Berries are great and I often recommend the blueberries in particular because they are a real superfood. They are packed with important nutrients and antioxidants, anthocyanins in particular, which give them their blue color. Antioxidants help to fight against oxidative stress and inflammation in the body which are linked to many chronic diseases including CAD and diabetes. Blueberries are also low in calories and high in fiber. When it comes to healthy fruit, also consider grapes, especially the darker varieties. They are in season right now and they are rich in antioxidants including flavonoids and resveratrol. 
These compounds can help reduce inflammation and oxidative stress which are associated with both CKD and diabetes. Just like berries, grapes are also low in calories and can be a great snack also. Apples are also great for you. Eating them regularly was actually linked to a lower chance of developing diabetes. Pears? Very underrated. They have even more fiber than apples. Also consider citrus fruit, a great source of vitamin C. So what fruits should you avoid? Now these are just a few options but considering that the recommendation of avoiding high potassium foods for those with kidney disease is a thing of the past, basically any fruit can be part of your diet, especially because you want the largest part of your calories to come from carbohydrates, as we have seen. And if you didn't know this already, people with kidney disease are not supposed to avoid potassium by default anymore. And I've talked more in depth about this in my video up here and also down in the description if you missed it. Actually, today most fruits are suitable for a renal diet. Wait, 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 wait. Now you may ask, are you really telling us that there are no forbidden fruits in the diet for diabetes and kidney disease? Even those with a high GI? Well, yes. And the reason is glycemic load. Even fruits with a high glycemic index or GI in short, such as watermelon, overripe bananas, or well-ripened cantaloupes can be present in moderation as a part of a healthy meal. In fact, while the GI is important, it doesn't really tell us how much the food is going to raise our blood sugar. Watermelon, for example, has a high glycemic index of 80, but a serving of watermelon has so little calories that its glycemic load is only 5, meaning that it won't really spike your insulin if you eat it in moderation and with foods rich in fats and fiber. Yeah, that's why the American Diabetic Association recommends eating fruits. They are healthy. So question, do you eat fruit regularly? Why or why not? Let's talk about it in comment section. And what about exotic fruits? As you probably can see from my thumbnail, I love exotic fruits. And one that I always recommend is the Papaya! Papayas are rich in lycopene but also vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin E. Combined together, they have been shown to reduce inflammatory markers, which is a great way to protect your heart and kidneys. So keep in mind that fruit in general should always be a staple of any healthy di diabetes or not. And another reason why fruit in general really helps is its fiber content. Because you see, fiber has massive benefits for your kidneys, as long as you get enough of it every day. Question, are you getting at least 25 to 30 grams of dietary fiber every day? Medical science is clearly getting to the consensus that everyone needs at least 25 to 30 grams of dietary fiber per day, including those with kidney disease. And guys, when it comes to increasing your intake of soluble fiber, you can also consider supplements. You see, grains and veggies are extremely healthy for you, don't get me wrong, but they also contain some calories, protein, phosphorus, and other nutrients you may want to avoid. This is why not many people manage to eat all the fiber they need every day. So time to cut this fiber gut and start lowering our creatinine levels. There is a supplement acacia fiber that I use every day and that I always recommend. So consider adding it to your eating plan if you already haven't. The reason is that acacia fiber alone can make a serious difference in all the stages of CKD despite the cause of the issue. This 100% natural substance directly binds to creatinine and other uremic toxins in the intestine, preventing them from reaching the precious filters of the body. Acacia fiber is so effective in removing creatinine it was used in test subjects with stage 5 CKD who wanted to avoid being tied to a machine. Acacia fiber worked so well, some of them were able to avoid dialysis for years. After that, more research showed that this natural substance can help in all the stages of CKD. So consider adding it to your regimen if you aren't using it already. More info about it in the description by the way. 
Up next, considering we want to get about 60% of our calories every day from carbs, what other foods can we eat? Well, grains. Grains are some of the most crucial dietary staples in many countries worldwide. So question, what grains should be the staples of your eating plan? Now, when it comes to grains, it's always recommended to focus on low GI carbs, complex carbs that won't spike your insulin. Let's see some of these very healthy carb sources. Starting with bulgur. Bulgur is one of the whole grain wheat products that are the lowest on phosphorus and this is crucial for people with kidney disease. This nutritious grain is a good source of B vitamins, magnesium, iron, and manganese. It's also full of dietary fiber, which is important for the digestive tract. Make it a regular on your table. Another whole grain, low both on the GI scale and in phosphorus is wild rice. Wild rice is not really rice, it's a whole grain. This means that it has a lower glycemic index and a lot more fiber, nutrients, and vitamins compared to any other type of rice. It's also lower in phosphorus and it comes with many health benefits. Wild rice can contain as much as 30 times antioxidants as white rice. Now guys, many other options are available when it comes to grains. Many patients also eat pasta and rice and bread as a part of their diet. These foods may be useful to reach your target of calories and carbohydrates every day. It's important to note that weight loss is not a desired outcome for individuals in the advanced stages of kidney disease, all right? For many people with CAD stage 4, the best strategy will be to get a high number of calories from carb every day while limiting protein as much as possible. And while this may seem counterintuitive at first, the main danger grains pose to kidney health is not their carb content, but their protein content. You see, a recent study just found out that the extra protein you may get from these staple foods may be a real issue for many kidney patients. Yes, what this study found out, as we can see, is that when the diets of kidney patients were put to the test, most of them weren't able to keep protein intake as low as it should be. And that's a problem. According to studies, eating too much protein makes kidney disease progress faster. The solution? A proteic pasta and rice. Another healthy grain that you may want to eat regularly is a proteic pasta and rice. Today, you can find a proteic or zero protein products especially developed for people with kidney problems. Like almost any grain, pasta and rice are not just carb sources, they also contain protein. The issue is that for many patients, getting enough calories every day without overloading on dangerous protein is not always possible. So question, is the protein you are eating damaging your kidneys? And what can you do about that? More about this issue and the solution in my video up here. But don't go away yet, we still have to see what the safest carb source actually is. Before that, a question I always get. For someone with diabetes, wouldn't it be better to completely avoid carbs? Aren't carbs what's causing diabetes? Well, no. It's not how it works, says science. You see, even the ADA, the American Diabetes Association, recommends eating enough fruit and high-carb veggies. The reason? You can lose weight and lower your fasting glucose levels much more efficiently if you are following a diet with plenty fruits and veggies. A recent study compared the benefits in terms of weight loss of a keto diet with a personalized diet that was low in GI but that had plenty carbs. 18 months after the dietary intervention, those following the diet with carbs instead of the keto not just did lose a lot more weight, they also had improvements in all the most important metabolic parameters compared to the keto. They had better cholesterol levels, better fasting glucose, and so on. But is this the end for those keto shields on the internet? Well, let's hope so. And since we know now that carbs are safe for everyone, what is the safest carb source you can find? Well, starchy veggies such as corn. Contrary to popular belief, corn does not cause any unhealthy spike in your blood sugar levels. Corn is rich in fiber, great to help absorbing sugar and carbs more slowly, which is absolutely a must for people with diabetes, but it can help everyone actually. And also, red potatoes. 
Red potatoes are amazing. Potatoes are rich in nutrients and fiber. Potatoes are a gluten-free carb sources that's also low on the GI scale, especially if you cook them the right way. Red potatoes in particular are a great source of resistant starch. This starch is not broken down and fully absorbed by the body. Research has linked resistant starch to many health benefits, including reducing insulin resistance, which in turn improves blood sugar control. Interestingly, you can also increase the resistant starch content of potatoes. To do this, store boiled potatoes in the fridge overnight and consume them cold. This will actually lower their GI even more. So here's another great veggie that you absolutely want in your diet. Beets. Beets are, in my opinion, one of the healthiest veggies out there. Beets are very rich in folate or vitamin B9, which protects blood vessels and reduces the risk of heart disease, stroke, and it also protects the kidneys. They are also naturally high in nitrates, a very powerful vasodilator. This is the main reason why beets are so good against hypertension. Actually, in a study on kidney disease sufferers, those who drank juice made from beets had a very significant improvement in both diastolic and systolic pressure. There are other starchy vegetables that can be part of a renal diet, including peas, white potatoes, squashes, and more. And if you want to learn more about the healthiest foods for your kidneys, this video up here is for you, and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.